started at the Hamilton Wood Show. Now, it was for a demonstration of Hampshire Sheen colours and texture and some embellishing wax. But honestly, I wasn't happy with the shape. Um, so today, I've got it back on the lathe. I didn't even finish the inside of it because I knew right away when I, when I turned it that I didn't like the shape of it. But sometimes you just have to go with it because it was only one hour to do the demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a tenon on the inside, turn it around, redo the backside, and then we'll get this bowl finished. Okay, so I've got a tenon on the inside of the bowl now. So I'm just going to turn this take this off of the chuck Okay, so I think this is the general shape that I now want to go for. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a lip here with some kind of a detail, maybe a burn detail. Um, and then the rest of it is just going to be sanded and finished. Um, so yeah, there will definitely be some burn detail on this edge, I think. I think that's the way to go, um, to give it some kind of a character or pattern. But let's get this thing sanded down. I'll come right back when it's Okay, sanded. I have wet sanded this down to 400 grit. So, and then uh, I use uh, Warner oil uh, to lubricate the wood as I sand it to the higher grits, the 400 grit, um, because it helps reduce heat and uh, it also creates a slurry and reduces the amount of dust in the air. So, I do like wet sanding. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to seal this uh, with sanding seal because I've removed the oil with denatured alcohol. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it with um, a shellac based sanding sealer. Let that dry, denib it and then we'll go on to the Yorkshire grip process. So after much thought I decided to get my razor tip out and I'm going to burn the rim with uh, score marks all the way around. It's going to take some time, so I'll video a short sec section of it and then uh, we'll get the rest of it all complete. Okay, so at this point I've got the outside of the bowl turned and it's sanded to 320 grit, cleaned and sealed and also the rim is burnt with my, uh, my razor tip burner. Um, I was thinking about adding some embellishing colour to that, um, then I kind of was backwards and forwards, I think now I'm going to leave it just the way it is, but I might add some brass tacks. Um, 
kind of Nick Agar style, I guess you could say. I think it's Nick Agar that does the, yeah, the Viking bowl. If you haven't seen that, you should check that out. It's really cool. Thanks, Nick, for the inspiration. Um, also, Leona Fay, she did something today on Facebook, and it's kind of pushed me in the direction of possibly using uh, rust paint on the inside. So I've got some, but I haven't used it yet. It's in the cupboard, so uh, I think I'll finish the outside, turn it around, hollow it out, and finish it with the uh, rust paint. So that's something I haven't used before. So let's hope it turns out good because I plan on putting this piece in the competition at the um, Toronto Wood Show in February, uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th of February. If you don't know about that, head on over. It should be a great show. It was last year anyway. Okay, let's move on. We'll go on to the Yorkshire. Okay, so I'm going to lightly denib this with a scouring pad just so there's no shiny and dull spots in the shellac base sanding sealer. So pretty much standard, I always use the original and then the microfine and then uh, Hampshire Sheen Gloss and then the Hampshire Sheen Microfine Wax on the... Okay, so we'll put some Yorkshire Grit Original on my hand with the lathe off, just coat the wood area. I'm not too worried about the burnt area. I don't want to put it on there. I'm going to use the microfine, same process. Bring it back down to slow speed. Lay this by hand all over. And that is the Yorkshire Grit phase done. We're going to move on to the Hampshire Sheen phase, which is a high gloss and microcrystalline. So first of all we'll take the, the high gloss and apply a thin layer all over the back side of the bowl and uh, I will actually let this dry. This wax will vap off and dry and at that point you can buff it in. Okay so the wax has dried and it's gone a bit tacky so I'm just going to burnish that in now. nice and smooth. What I'm going to do now is complete that finish with some microcrystalline wax which will basically give that a really hard wearing finish. I'll apply a coat over the whole thing, just a thin layer and then let that let that vap off as well, let it go uh, tacky. So you want to feel that just to make sure that there's no tacky wax still left on it. That way you can be sure that it's burnished in properly and that is beautifully smooth. So what I can do now is I'm ready now to turn this around and hollow it out. Okay so I know that this rim is off. You can see it running against my finger there that it's off. So I have to remove a small amount from this rim to even that up and then hollow it out. This is all running true to the lathe. This edge isn't. So I'm going to fix this edge and then hollow it out.
that is essentially trued the bowl up all the way to here now. Um, obviously there's still a lot of wood there to remove and I can now remove the tenon that I used and this big lump of wood can be gradually brought down as I remove all of this material. start sanding this, work my way through the grits up to 320 grit. Then we're going to look into this product here. This is uh, the rust finish kit uh, with metal effects. Um, so we're going to see how that works. It's got the primer, the iron and the rust. I've never used this before so I'm going to read up the instructions. This is a kit that I bought at Home Depot here in Canada. Seems like it's available worldwide though, a lot of people are using this. Um, the reason I got this out today, in fact, was uh, a lady in Ireland, Leona Fay. Uh, she made something and posted it today, and I thought, ah, look, maybe I can do that. Something similar with the bowl here, so just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so I'll have the nicely finished wax bottom with the burnt rim, and then the rust effect on the inside. And I'm thinking about putting Nick Agar-inspired uh, copper buttons or something around the rim. Um, we'll see what I can come up with. Okay, so I've cleaned this with alcohol. It's been sanded to 320, cleaned it. It's nice and smooth. And there's the finished bowl now sanded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that down and I'm gonna start painting it. These are the three bottles that came in that box. Uh, the primer, the iron, and then the, the rust liquid, which comes with a little spray pump. I've got a couple of these foam brushes. I'm going to be using them, I think, because they'll just be throwaway. Uh, so the primer is here. I'm going to give that a good mix. So I'll put some in the bottom. And we have to put two coats on the whole thing. Oh boy, that's a solid color. I certainly don't want to use the rust spray on the lathe, or anywhere near the lathe for that matter. I don't know if that would affect the lathe, but I think it might. Okay, so I have to let that sit for two hours. 
and then I can do a second coat Okay, so it's two coats of primer, actually half an hour between the coats and then two hours for the final dry, so I, I messed that up. But it has been uh, half an hour bef since the first coat, so I'm now going to apply the second coat. Second coat goes on a lot easier than the first coat. Okay, and now I will leave that for two hours and then I'll apply the iron. And that is in fact two coats also. Two coats of iron allow half an hour between them and one hour to final dry. So that will be my next step. One of these, then half an hour wait, then another one, and then one hour wait. And then there will be two coats of the rust. It's kind of exciting. Okay, it's been two hours since I put the primer coat on, so it is now dry, and now I'm going to go ahead and put the iron coat on, um, and again I'm going to put it on now, and then again in half an hour, so two coats, and then I'll wait an hour before I apply the rust, the liquid to make it rust. So again, this is, I'll shake this up, and put some in the bottom and paint the whole surface with it. Not quite sure how this will go on. Let's look, see. It's different looking. Hmm. Seems like it goes on quite thin. I guess that's why we put two coats on. And we'll take care of that rim as well. Not great coverage for a first go, but hopefully the second layer will even that out. I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to leave this now for half an hour to dry, and then come back and do a second coat. Okay, it has been a half an hour since this was painted with the iron paint. Um, it requires a second coat, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, the first coat went on with and you can see lots of brush strokes in there so I'm hoping the second coat I don't see that if I do see brush strokes in it I think what I might do is kind of blot it on with a paper towel because uh, I think the end result would look better if it wasn't have you if it didn't have uniform lines of brush strokes in it although that might disappear with the rust spray I really don't know and we'll put some in the middle and we'll brush it in first and see how it looks Okay, it looks like it's going on quite a bit more uniform this time. Again, this is the iron paint, so this is the layer that will go rusty with the uh, with the final spray that goes on. I'm really hoping for cool, a cool effect. Supposedly it's a bluish tint to the rust so I don't really know what to expect. I have no idea what it's going to look like because I haven't given it a test or anything. 
So this is uh, new for me. And I think I think that's not too bad. Okay, so I have to leave this now for an hour before I can do the spray. And again, the spray will be done twice, five minutes apart. And uh, and then that should be done. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so it has been two hours since I last put the iron coat on this. So now I've got the, the rust element that I'm gonna put on it. And uh, if I read the instructions again, spray on a light coat of the rust activator over the entire surface. Wait five minutes and then spray a second light coat. And then we'll see how it we'll see how it changes. It says as the activated surface dries within 30 or 40 minutes, a real blue patina finish will appear. So I don't know what that's gonna look like yet, but we'll see. So here goes here goes for the spray. Okay, so now we'll wait five minutes. Okay, so I just put the second coat on and it's wet as you can see. Um, I'm gonna now leave that. It says for about 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna give it 30 to 40 minutes to uh, set up and then we'll see. see how this changes as it dries and hopefully goes rusty. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and uh, I don't know if you can really see because it's difficult getting the light just right, but it is actually turning kind of a rusty color. Um, I may end up spraying it some more if I'm not totally satisfied with the activator, I'm not sure, but we'll see. It looks kind of neat, I guess, different. We'll see better when it's completely finished. Okay, so it's now been about an hour and it's dried. And it actually looks pretty, pretty cool. Uh, definitely rusted. Although there are areas that aren't rusty. But I think that's okay. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, it might change again overnight, I'm not really sure. But that's kind of, kind of cool looking. So there it is. And thanks for watching. That was uh, fun to make. Definitely uh, a different project to what I usually do with the rust paint. Um, I usually go for the natural look, but it was a lot of fun to make. And I did in fact enter the Toronto Woodworking Show. Um, the uh, competition, I actually entered the Novice, uh, mainly because I haven't been in their competition more than twice. Uh, I entered in the Hamilton competition in the novice section and came second um, and this time I came first so uh, yay me I guess <laughs> I got my ribbon okay so anyway that was that was cool and as you may have noticed if you've watched my videos before I've just recently upgraded my lathe from the uh, King Canada lathe to the uh, Laguna Revo 1836 absolutely beautiful lathe and I am thrilled to bits really chuffed and I'm looking forward to using it I want to thank King Industrial for their service over the past three years with my previous lathe it was a good start to lathe but it was time for me to move up the ladder a little bit um, and I'm absolutely thrilled with this I want to thank the new subscribers I've seen I've had a lot of new subscribers even though I haven't really been putting out a lot of new videos lately um, hopefully that will change now that I have a new lathe a new reason to be on the lathe um, this has a low speed of zero all the way up through 3500 RPM, so it gives you much more control over a piece that's maybe out of balance or something. I'll leave some photographs at the end so you guys can take a closer look. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you again for the next wood turning project. Take care now. <laughs>